Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Welcome to the online church school for Homer United Methodist Church. Today, we celebrate Easter Sunday. Again and again, the sun rises. Let's say a prayer. Loving God, for most of us, this day is like every other day. We wake up, get dressed, drink our coffee, eat our breakfast, and gradually come to life. And yet this day is like no other day. The sun rose and they knew it was a miracle. The tomb was empty and they knew it was love. So again and again we say, the longest night is over. Death has lost its sting. Jesus is among us. Alleluia. Amen. If you have been following the Lenten devotional, you will have read Reverend T. Denise Anderson's commentary for today. Do we ever consider the mechanics of a sunrise, she asks, and then continues, the earth spinning at a thousand miles per hour, traveling an orbit of 584 million miles around a star that's about a million times the size of our planet is dizzying. But because we've come to expect sunrises every day, we're not always impressed by them. Often, we sleep right through them. That doesn't make them any less awesome or miraculous, she writes. Once in a while, I am surprised by the incredible beauty of a sunrise, and I can't help but say, thank you, God, what a marvelous gift. That's what Easter is like as well. If we're not paying attention, it can catch us off guard. that you didn't understand? Maybe you opened it and thought, what is this? What do I do with it? Do you say thank you anyway? On that first Easter morning, the women disciples got a really weird present that they didn't know what to do with either. Our lesson today comes from Mark chapter 16 verses 1 through 8. Let's listen to the story from the Lectionary Story Bible, written by Ralph Milton, with the art of Margaret Kyle. She could hardly make herself move. Mary of Magdala spent all day Saturday mostly doing nothing. She would stand for a long time just looking at the sky. 
Then she would sit down and just look at the ground. Mary couldn't stop thinking about Jesus. She remembered thinking of the happy times when they were together in Galilee. She remembered the stories Jesus told. She remembered how kind he was, how he helped sick people feel better. He was so kind and gentle, she said to herself. Why would they want to kill him? How could Pilate and his soldiers be so cruel? Over and over in her mind, Mary kept thinking about Jesus. She didn't eat. She didn't sleep. She couldn't pray. She just kept thinking. Early on Sunday morning, Mary went to see the other Mary, Jesus' mother. The two women looked at each other. Their eyes were red from crying. Their faces were pale and tired. The two Marys gave each other a long, loving hug. They both knew what they had to do. It was something the Jewish people always did when someone died. They took some nice smelling spices with them and walked down the path to the grave where Jesus was buried. They wanted to put the spices on Jesus' body so it wouldn't smell bad. As they walked down the path, Jesus' mother asked the other Mary, We aren't strong enough to roll that big stone away from Jesus' grave. Maybe there'll be someone around who can help us, said the other Mary. When they came around a bend in the pathway, they stopped. Look, said Mary of Magdala, the big stone is already rolled away. Who could have done that? They ran up and looked inside the grave. It was dark, but they could see something that looked like they weren't sure what it was. It almost looks like an angel dressed all in white, whispered Mary, Jesus' mother. Then they heard a voice. Don't be afraid. The voice sounded friendly and warm. You are looking for Jesus, aren't you? He isn't here. See, this is the place where they put his body. The two Marys grabbed each other's hands. They felt very afraid. This is what I want you to do, said the person in the white clothing. Go and tell all of Jesus' friends to go back to Galilee. Jesus is going there ahead of you, and he will meet you there, just like he told you he would. When the two Marys heard that, they ran away from the grave as fast as they could. They were even more afraid. The women had watched Jesus die, and they were very, very sad. The next day, they couldn't have a funeral because it was the Sabbath. So the very first thing they did on the first day of the week, as soon as they could, they went to the tomb, expecting to take care of Jesus' body and prepare him for his funeral. But what happened when they got there? Jesus wasn't there. How weird is that? That's not at all what they were expecting. And on top of that, there's a strange young man sitting where Jesus' body should be, telling them wild stories about Jesus being alive. Even though the women saw him die with their own eyes, Mark tells us they were afraid. I would be too. Wouldn't you? We don't always understand the gifts God gives us, but we do give God thanks for strange miracles like the risen Christ who brings us new life. What are some of the ways you celebrate this miracle?
Let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for miracles that we don't always understand. Help us be on the lookout for new life in the world. As we celebrate this day of Jesus' resurrection, again and again and again, may we see the wonder in the words, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. For the past few weeks, several people have been working together to make Easter gifts for our church's young people. You should have received a colorful bag of goodies and a brown bag with plastic eggs for an egg hunt. Inside each of these plastic eggs are two puzzle pieces. When you open all the eggs, you will be able to put the puzzle together. If you didn't get a bag or a set of bags, please let me know and I'll make sure to get you one. My contact information is at the end of this video. Next week, we start a brand new church school series. Watch the church newsletter for more information about what's coming. Happy Easter, everyone.